hey, hey, Matt Walsh. Look at that. Ooh, this video is going to get a lot of views. Because I'm in the thumbnail. Hey, hey. Let's go. So, a while ago, Matt Walsh uh, came out with a kid's book, which was terribly written and terribly illustrated. And uh, I think the main thing I was offended by, and you can find the video in my logs, um, the main thing that I was offended by was that it wasn't even good at doing the conservative, like, disinfo stuff, you know? Like, it, it, didn't, it didn't even, like, it, did, it didn't even do a good job propagandizing. Like, it wasn't even good in its goal of being a conservative propaganda book or whatever. But I, I am, uh, you know, uh, appreciative of Matt Walsh's editors for using a somewhat nicer photo of me than most people do. Yeah, they didn't use the soy face photo. I bet you all the comments are, uh, are able to name me. My ego is destroyed. I don't see my name. Oh, there I am. Let's take a look, huh? The title here... Responding to transgender YouTube allies who hate my children's book. I know what they mean here, but the language makes it sound like I'm trans, you know? Uh, like, it's weird. Why wouldn't they say YouTuber trans allies? You know what I mean? And I'm, and I'm the only one on the thumbnail, but... Alright. Let's go. Cracking my egg. Yeah. Cancelled. Ooh. So longtime fans of this show will remember that um, last week, a long time ago, we cancelled uh -huh. trans YouTuber Samantha Lux, who uh -huh. posted a video attacking my best-selling LGBT novel, Johnny the Walrus, which is available for pre-order at johnnythewalrus.com. Uh -huh. After I debunked Sam's debunking, many people in the comments informed me that YouTube is in fact full of videos criticizing my seminal work of children's literature. Oh, wait, well, uh, let me see. Where is the old video? Hold on. Um, of, of Samantha, Samantha Lux. Let me see. It said a week ago. So oh, there we go. Transgender YouTuber reacts to my books. Wow. Half a million views. That's all it takes. Is that what Samantha Lux looks like? Holy shit. I don't know if I've ever actually seen a picture. Yeah, she's a Stacy. Yeah, I guess so. Huh. I, I, yeah, I, whatever. Uh, anyway, you know, I, I, I imagine it's going to be a repeat pretty much of these talking points, but hit me up. Johnny the Walrus which is available at johnnythewalrus.com. Uh -huh. They wanted to know why I only picked on good old Sam uh -huh. while leaving these other would-be debunkers unscathed. I, wa I wonder why. I, I am curious. Is there a possibility that after publishing a book which is allegorically against trans people, you would then highlight trans people's making fun of it? Possibly. Maybe. Can't prove it. Possibly, though. Well, as you know, I'm a big advocate for equity and inclusion. Yeah. I would never want to single anybody out unfairly or leave or leave anybody out unfairly. And so today, I'm going to go through all the other anti-Johnny the Walrus videos on the platform and cancel all of them. All of them. Now, we're not going to have time, unfortunately, to watch all these videos in their entirety, but we'll watch a short and hopefully representative clip from each, just so we get an idea of what they're all about. Representative clip. What do you guys want to bet that my clip is just going to be like, it's going to start in the beginning of a sentence and end still in the beginning of the same <laughs> sentence or something. Let's see. Enough to right. demonstrate why they deserve to be canceled. Some of these videos are from accounts with lots of subscribers. Some uh -huh. of them have a subscriber base that includes their immediate families and nobody else. Mm -hmm. And some probably don't even have a fan base that large. But we're going we're gonna to include the whole spectrum today because I think that's, that, that's the fairest thing. And again, this is about equity. My brother is subscribed to So we begin to with the YouTube channel Just a Lazy Gamer. Already you can That's appreciate me. the self-awareness at the very least. That's me. Let's see what Lazy Gamer has to say about uh, my book. Yes. Oh, Matt Walsh me. has decided to make a book hating on trans children. Because you know, you got to get that hate speech in when they're young. But here's the thing. He's also decided to do the let's go Brandon song Bryce and Gray approach and go, hey, maybe you can get me in the top 10. And that'll, that'll really show them if you, you give me your money. And if we go to Amazon, he's already got 23 ratings. No verified purchasers, of course, because the book hasn't made it to anyone's door. I'm pretty sure with how the self-publication through Amazon system goes that I could produce a book and advertise it on my channel and pretty immediately get the best selling. Like, like pretty effortlessly. If I price the book low, like I, it would be, yeah, I think it'd be quite easy to do that. 
I should just write like a 20 page manifesto on the dog pill and put that out there, you know, um, and then be like, and be known as like the best selling author who wrote the, the, the world's most recognized. That's good. Actually, wait, hold on. This is good. That's good though. Wait. Hold on. Now, this book is on Amazon. Amazon has rules against hate speech in their book. They have that in the rules. And I get the feeling he's hoping that this book gets banned on Amazon to play the victim even more, maybe after they get it up to like number 15 or whatever on a chart. And of course, he's selling signed copies for... Eh, this analysis is a little lacking. The book's contents don't violate the hate speech policies for Amazon. You've got to go really above and beyond for Amazon's hate speech to crack down. And this is just... The book is basically like, Johnny loved to be imagination kid. And one day he said he was a walrus. So the mom, the mom took him to the walrus doctor and gave him walrus pills and made him eat raw fish or whatever like you know it's, it's very i mean it's stupid but like yeah it's it's it, it, it's it's not like you know uh uh the, the turner diaries for trans people or whatever it's it, it's not gonna flag amazon i think it's 30 dollars with 10 dollar shipping because of course he is because the grifting can't you literally buy mind comp on amazon well sure though i think you would argue that's because that book has historical significance i think that there's probably a difference between like putting up Mein Kampf on Amazon from, like, a publisher that just has the rights to Mein Kampf versus, like, somebody writing an equally hateful book today and putting it up. I feel like the latter would probably be taken down. Though maybe it wouldn't be. Like, I, I, like, I don't know. It never stops. Um, okay, to begin with, he talks about there's a sign, signed copies. $30 for a signed copy is a steal. I'm, I'm literally the most prominent and respected LGBT children's author in American history, as well as the country's leading cult leader and the most generous philanthropist and abuela fundraiser of the 21st century. Mm -hmm. So my signature is worth thousands. Um, he does my but give it away for a measly $30 just speaks again to my generosity, not to mention my humility. Furthermore, I, I take a great exception to the claim that we wanted to get banned from Amazon after he reaching number my 15 bit. on the chart. That's Gotta say, Vosh, he does your bit better. No, no, this is worse. It's much worse. It's it's only really funny if you're not saying it as an actual ploy to legitimize bad ideas, right? It sh it should be a clear, unambiguously comedic over exaggeration of of things you're willing to stand by, as opposed to the sort of shuffly like you know. Um, didn't Matt Walsh get suspended from Twitter a while back? I'm not sure. It's absurd. I don't know. We wanted to get banned after reaching the top five. We did get to the top five, but we didn't get banned. Instead, we just got banned from Target, which was a rather sort of disappointing um, runner-up prize. Finally, surprising. the book does not hate on trans kids, primarily because there's no such thing as trans kids. Mm -hmm. My issue is with the adults who have invented the category of trans kids. Mm -hmm. So if I'm hating on anyone, it's them, because they're morally debased child abusers. Uh -huh. Hopefully that clears that up. Uh -huh. Now we have uh, YouTuber Sam Collins. Sam has a larger I presence on YouTube, Collins. over 800,000 subscribers. Let's see what Sam has to offer. And a simple procedure cuts feet into fins. The doctor wants to cut- oh, Yeah, we covered this before, but look at how bad the art is, man. Like, look at this. So, of course, the, 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 doc, the trans doctor is, like, gender ambiguous because they have pink hair, but, like, a facial hair five o'clock shadow that's rendered in a style different to the other people. But like, look, look at this draw. Like, I actually wouldn't be surprised if Matt Walsh drew this himself, you know? I feel like this is a level of artistic skill that could actually be emulated by a person with no experience drawing whatsoever. Procedure cuts feet into fins. The doctor wants to cut into Johnny and make it That's an box. NFT. Ah, there it is. The whole mutilation thing. Because we chop ourselves up. Remember, when we have surgeries, we're mutilating ourselves and we're chopping ourselves up. It's also funny because this book is about a child. And I've said over and over again, and many trans people have said that children don't get surgeries. We could say it a thousand times, but these people still just choose not to believe what we say. It's really funny because this can be explained with just one simple thought. Children don't get surgery, right? How would you ever have a surgery when you're not fully developed anyways? You can't cut this off 
if it's not there. So please explain to me how these children are getting surgeries. Uh, happily. All right, so let's see. Let's see what the follow through is. We're rate. This is like the back and forth where we're rating it. So far, Matt Walsh has actually played out uh, decent segments from their video. I was very excited to see where from my video he pulls. I'll explain it. Uh, a few points here. First, no, I don't think that when trans people have surgery, they're mutilating themselves. I know. Because that's if you have true. a trans person who has gallbladder surgery ah, or yes. gets their uh, ACL repaired or has heart surgery, mm -hmm. I wouldn't call that mutilation. Surgeries that are meant to treat medical issues are not mutilation, no matter who's getting them. But a surgery that it's so somebody in chat saying semantics fuck off. It's actually not semantics because uh, trans surgery is a surgery to treat medical issues, according to medical doctors and the medical industry. So, you know, you know, so it's there isn't even a distinction here, like at all. It's like in, in, for, as far as the science concerned, there's just no distinction whatsoever. Um, also, we we do cosmetic surgeries for children, don't we? Literally, a uh, cleft lip, right? There are babies born sometimes with uh with with cleft lips. I think that's like a fairly common one. The line for what's considered like a um an acceptable degree of medical interference is really really variable. Um, I I don't think that anything done with 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 like trans kids well i can't say anything i don't know what's happening all the time all over the world but i think that uh you know it's 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 in line with pre-existing expectations on on the subject you know yeah yeah like this like there are some you'll have babies that are born i think it's called cleft lip yeah uh and and that'll usually get treated like really really early uh which makes sense because i mean pardon my bias but i don't know this looks like cozier than this that's yeah i don't know I don't actually know what cleft lip does to you medically, but people people seem to agree uh, and it's good it's it's good to not have it, you know. Easier to eat, maybe. Destroys a healthy body part, or that slices open a healthy organ and flips it inside out, is mutilation no matter who's getting it. But don't say, wait, destroy, wait, hold on. Flip, wait. But we do that. It, this is a completely arbitrary. It's not even a semantic distinction that he's talking about here. He's just making one up. He would be a good guy to talk to. I think it'd be fun to talk to him. What about circumcision? Ooh, that's right. He's probably pro-circumcision, right? Well, I think circumcision is bad because there's no reason to do it. It is mutilation because there's no benefit to it, apart from, in some cases, it can be necessary. Um, and also people are like, well, it keeps your dick cleaner, to which the answer is like, wash your dick then. Also, circumcision is done when you're zero years old. Any surgery done with trans stuff is done when you're more than zero years old. So there are some differences there. By definition, that's mutilation. Now, if you don't believe me, let's go to the dictionary. Mutilation. Here's the, the, the definition. An act or instance of destroying, removing, or severely damaging a limb or other body part of a person or animal. So what happens? Like, like, like getting an appendectomy? Like, like, again, like, this, so this is a failed semantic game here. Like, yeah, if we're talking about destroying or removing something, like, okay, what if a person gets frostbite and you remove something like that, okay? What about uh, the cleft lip thing? I mean, that is an alteration or, or uh, uh, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's just dumb. What happens to the penis during a sex chain surgery? What happens to a woman's breasts during top surgery? They yoink them. These parts of the body are either removed or destroyed. They are, by definition, mutilated. There's no denying this. Was yeah, wisdom to the claim that mutilation. children don't get yeah. these procedures. That is, uh, for one thing, a lie. Minor girls do, in fact, have their breasts removed. It's very common. Happens. Oh, wait, 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 hold, wait, wait, hold on. Children, or like, what do we mean by children? Because Johnny the Walrus in his book is like eight. Do we mean like seventeen years old after like three years of hormone blockers? Like, what? Like, where? Where exactly are the are the lines here yeah and what cases where you know citation needed i think that in england 15 is the threshold for medical autonomy um or is it 16 and then in some states in the united states it's lower than 18 i think it's like 16 for one west coast state i'm not sure but that's in keeping with all medical procedures not just like trans stuff you know the time minor boys have even had their penises mutilated that also happens where? But even if that right. weren't happening, Who? still, children are being conditioned 
to make those choices, quote unquote, later on in life. They're being put on that path, even though they don't understand the path they're on. So I like this right here because he's essentially admitting that it doesn't matter to him whether or not it's actually happening. Like he's saying like, uh, yeah, this happens all the time. But even if it didn't, you know, the nefarious trans lobby, it's yeah, the conspiratorial narrative exists either way. Keep in mind, even if there were, and there's no way of making this happen, but even if there were zero instances of any underage medical intervention for trans people of any kind on Earth, he would still be talking about this in the same way that he is right now. Because it's not about the surgery or the hormones. It's about the existential need to defend hegemonic gender roles. Uh, it's not as though Matt Walsh would be okay with trans people if they didn't medically transition, after all. Uh, it's, it's a holistic opposition that he needs to construct an attack against whether or not anything bad is really happening. And even if most boys aren't being physically altered through surgery, they are being given puberty block blockers like Lupron, Brockers. which is chemical castration. The same drug used to... It is not uh, chemical castration, by the way. That is not true. Isn't Brock from Pokemon? That's what I'm talking about, man. Hey, listen. Cancel me, all right? I think we should be giving kids chemical Brockers, okay? Because this dude's rad. He's even a pansexual. <laughs> A stupid and dumb joke. All right, all right, all right. Chemically castrated sex offenders. So your argument, Sam, is that the boys aren't being surgically castrated, they're just being chemically castrated. It's, it's not chemical castration. It's not, it's not what that is. It's not, it's not what that means, you know. And even that argument, as insane as it is, is also factually wrong. The truth is that both things are happening. Now we turn to uh, YouTuber Justi Justin Freakin. The guy's, uh, you know, he's a, he's a formidable voice in the culture. He has uh, 6,000 subscribers, averages easily over 30 views per video, and his channel description promises, quote, uncensored and unfiltered political talk and debate from a leftist perspective. I can't produce viable semen after being on hormone blockers. It is a kind of chemical castration. Chemical castration entails a kind of purpose. Uh, chemical castration is employed for the purpose of reducing fertility. Uh, hormone blockers are employed for the purpose of, well, preventing hormones from being absorbed uh, by pubescent bodies. Um, but there are plenty of things that we do that do affect fertility that we don't call, like, chemical castration. The line there can get really blurry. For example, chemical castration can affect libido, but we don't call SSRIs, uh, uh, you know, antidepressive drugs chemical castration, even though in some cases they can, like, completely kill a person's libido. It's not sufficient to merely affect, uh, you know, the, the likelihood of impregnation for something to be um, uh, considered chemical castration. It has to entail more than that. No, I kicked her out. I know. Okay. Um, okay, gotcha. Uh, a pigeon. Yeah. Like how smoking weed sims slash seeds kills sperm? Is that true? Then the castration would be a side effect? Well, that would be like saying chemical castration is a side effect of, like, SSRIs, which, yeah, no. There, there's a critical difference between saying something lowers libido and saying something is chemical castration. There's a reason why it's not referred to, uh, to that in the, um, in the medical community. Or getting hit in the balls, yeah. The classic chemical castration. Perspective, the day's top news stories and videos with astute social commentary. Huh? I'm not sure if we can trust the part of astute social, the part about, you know, astute social commentary. I don't know about that. We'll find out in a minute. But we can be confident that it's uncensored. If this guy's a leftist, then certainly we can be assured that he has not been censored. So let's bring, uh, let's see what he brings to the table. What? Not as insane as Matt Walsh from the Daily Wire releasing a children's book. I got energy here. Here Hello. is Matt Walsh apparently What's getting up, dude? some children together for story hour with sweet baby Matt Walsh. Okay. Hello, boys and girls. Yeah, the kids look about as enthused as we are. 
He didn't draw. This is a whole, so far, what we're all we're establishing is this guy's wicked, sick aesthetic. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Oh, the f cartoons, and that's the main part of the book. Like passing yourself off as the author of this stupid book is insane. Because you know what this book is? This book is a actual talented illustrator. And then some dumb f words on top of it. I don't know if I agree with that assessment. Honestly, of I don't know why this guy doesn't get more views. I mean, he's like Macho Man Randy Savage. If Macho Man Randy Savage uh, could only bench press 45 pounds and was a hippie. But Randy... Matt, you can't make comments like that. You do look very soy, Matt. Also, how does he look like a hippie? He looks like a like a rocker. Like he looks like the he looks and talks like the stereotype of like a, a rock guy. He has a bandana on. Like a yeah, like a biker. Yeah, like a like a biker dude. That's not a hippie. He just he just sees long hair and thinks hippie, you know? Yeah, I don't I, like I don't know. It's very very strange to me. Yeah, Matt Walsh Matt Walsh sees this guy and he's like, "Ugh." Hippies. Like, okay. Uh, anyway, I appreciate his aesthetic. He's keeping the flame alive, okay? Because you know what this book is? This book is a actual talented illustrator. Don't, I don't know agree why with this guy that. doesn't get more views. I mean, he's like Macho Man Randy Savage. If Macho Man Randy Savage uh, could only bench press 45 pounds and was a hippie. But Randy has exposed a startling truth that I did not illustrate my own children's book. I have tried to keep this hidden. My theory. By putting the illustrator's name on the cover. I was Blood hoping apart. to hide it in plain sight. And my plan almost worked until Seth Rogen's unemployed cousin foiled the plot. Um, all right, let's finish this up with a, with a somewhat larger account. This is uh, Vaush or Vash. I don't know how to pronounce it. Vaush. 386,000 subscribers. His Wait, hold on. Sam Collins has a YouTube channel twice my size. If we're ending on the big one. All right, whatever. This video is titled, Matt Walsh Reads His New Anti-Trans Book to Kids, and I Am Incredibly Uncomfortable. And the video has done pretty well for him. It's got nearly 150,000 views. Thank you. Let's skip ahead to, uh, I think, what is, I guess, the crux of his argument against my book. Huh. Wait, what is the lesson uh, at the... Wait, so wait, now is he bird gender? Wait, what is the... What does any of this mean? <laughs> what does what any of this bewildered. mean, man? Uh... No, he said earlier, people online told his mom a well-meaning mother was duped by evil transgender SJWs. Yeah, yeah, okay, but, like, what about the kid? Like, the kid didn't seem... After the kid said, I am a walrus, woo-woo, and had a picture taken of him, the kid had no input whatsoever. Did the kid want to eat the worms? If not, why didn't he stop? What Was, was the kid like, I don't want to eat the worms, and the mom was like, no, you have to. The people on Instagram said that you have to, or I'm a big, like... Pfft. I, I, I don't want to dig into this too hard because it's obviously really stupid, but I am genuinely astounded by the incompetence with which this was put together. Like, they paid an artist, they had it published, like, it's on sale. Like, how do you not put a little more effort? Not even just the quality of the art, but, like, the language used betrays such an incredible incompetence in using allegory to deliver a political message. I don't know why you'd include that epic takedown in your video. I like how he blurred my chat, probably because it was just... Yeah, yeah, Tempest, that wasn't you that blurred the chat. He, it was probably unfathomably rude. Uh, but yeah, that was my big thing. Because I don't want to, like, go over the book again. You can watch the original video if you want. But, like, the issue to me was, like, I think I could have made a better anti-trans book. Like, if you just wanted to dishonestly make some w allegory about, like, a kid imagined that he was a walrus, therefore, and, and then, like, everyone took him so seriously that they pushed him into being trans or whatever. I feel like I could do that more effectively because there were some elements in the story that were kind of contrary to the, the underlying message here. It, really, the book wasn't for kids. The book was for parents of those kids. It was, like, it's actually a little weird, right? It's like the book... The book is for parents to read while thinking that it's for kids, but it's actually about them reaffirming their assurance that they're not the kind of parent who would take seriously people online telling them they're being transphobic for not taking their kids' identity seriously. That's the thing. So, 
yeah, yeah, I don't know. Well, anyway, let's throw it out there. Let's hear. Let's hear it. Matt, what do you got? Saving me for last. That's true. I'm not good with language. I mean, we can't all be wordsmiths like uh, Vouch here, who says things like, the language used betrays such an incredible incompetence in using allegory to deliver a political message. What am I supposed to do? Sorry, I'm sorry I'm carrying the torch of Western civilization forward. Dude, why, why do you speak in real life like you're a ninth grader writing a book report and trying to hit a minimum word count? You, you think it's a bad allegory. Just say that. So I'm not sure how you could... No, it's a... No, the, 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 the sentence was meaningful. It's not just a bad allegory. It's incompetence in using allegory to express political bias. It... Oh, my God. Okay, if the, if the chief criticism here is that word's too big, head hurdy, then okay. Judge the competence of the story or the allegory, considering you, by your own admission, don't understand the point. That You're a grown adult who failed to grasp the extremely simple message in a rhyming children's book written on cardboard for preschoolers. That's the point. No, that, that's the point. The, the, the point is the fact that, listen, this is literary analysis 101. The fact that Johnny didn't have any input on his own will after the parent went full tilt with the walrusification thing, sort of undermined the narrative. Like, did if Johnny was shown to have not wanted to be a walrus, but the parent forced them, then that would have been in line with the idea that... Oh, uh, uh. And somehow you think that your failures of reading comprehension are an embarrassment to me. I mean, I am embarrassed watching this, but the embarrassment is of the secondhand variety, I assure you. Ah. The good news is that... Um, you seem to have almost understood the point. Uh -huh. So you got to the 10-yard line intellectually before you fumbled the mental football. You nearly made it all... This is the biggest no you I've ever heard. I, I will admit, though, I do admire the competence because being told that your messaging is incompetent and then saying that the other person just didn't understand it, that's good. All the way there. Because you note how in the story, the mom is the focus... He's actually while the defending child, himself, Johnny, though. has little input into his own alleged lifestyle choice. He's doing things, he's walking down a certain path, but it doesn't really seem like he's, he's choosing to go in that direction. No, 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 make it explicit, Matt. I'm asking more from you. I hope you watch this. Listen, we, you, no, it's not sufficient. It's, it's, it's not enough for, for Johnny the Walrus to just be a, a, a passive, uh, you know, victim of other people's intent. You need to show the conflict between his real desire and between that of the parent. Because the story takes a very different message if Johnny the Walrus actually is going along with everything. I mean, he looks frightened, sure, but at no point does he express anything. But he literally just stops talking past the 50% mark of the book. Chet, you have to agree with me on this. This isn't about conservatism. This is about literary analysis, okay? Listen, here's the original thing, okay? Look, Johnny the Walrus has a big imagination, mom okay? Wow, her son. whoa, wowza, oh my god. And the mom is like, oh, wow, you're so cute. But then people online are like, oh, your child's not cute. They're a real walrus, and you need to take that seriously. And then you have the gender doctor, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, now look at, now look at Johnny, okay? Here, this is like the last line from Johnny, okay? Look. Johnny, Johnny is like, woo, I'm a walrus. That's the last time Johnny does anything, okay? Then the parent takes, the mom takes a photo of Johnny. The, the, the activists are like, you're a real walrus, Johnny, or whatever, you see? And then Johnny just stands here disinterestedly while this doctor says that they need to put them in gray makeup and eat worms. And Johnny's just like standing there looking bored. Like... I guess the mom is too, you know, like Johnny's like panicking here at the dramatic shot of the doctor holding the saw, though, again, it's a very weird kind of dramatic. It looks a little bit like Amori, you know, uh, it's just, it's just it looks kind of like faking, you know, like faking uh, being upset. <laughs> You're just something, um, you know, uh, and, and then, you know, uh, because again, this is all very weird. He he has wooden spoons in his mouth, and you have the gray makeup, and eating worms, and bathing outside, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, and you know what have you. But Johnny doesn't say anything at, at the latter bit. So the the message of the story changes massively. 
depending on how complicit Johnny is in the behavior that's taking place. I think this is highly unrealistic, and I think you could do better, Matt Walsh, okay? And this, this defensive behavior is very disappointing. Yes, Vouch, that's the point. That, that's exactly the point. That's what we're going for. The fact that Johnny's mommy is really the main character in a story that's ostensibly about Johnny himself is not an accident. That's a bit of intentional irony. But how would Johnny's mother have reacted to Johnny explicitly stating that he did not want to keep going forward with this weird walrus thing? Also, that's not what irony means. Very much an intentional creative decision by the brilliant author of this book, which is available at johnnythewalrus.com. It's almost as if I'm trying to make the point uh -huh. that transgenderism among children is once again an event, an invention of the adults around them. No child can actually choose this. But you failed to make that point. Johnny looks uncomfortable with the obviously ridiculous and hyperbolic treatments imposed upon him, but Johnny never disagrees with them outside of chafing physically at, at, at the fact that they, well, that he's a human, not a walrus. It, 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 you don't sufficiently indicate that Johnny's not on board with this. Why couldn't there have been like a, a page in the book where Johnny's like, Mom, I don't know about this. And the mom is like, listen, Johnny, I've read online. This is for your own good. If they just had that page, what, would it have cost that much to get that artist to do another page? Come on. Be better at being transphobic. Path. They don't have the psychological and emotional formation required to make an informed decision about fundamentally altering their identities. Any child, therefore, who, who does make such a decision, decision, quote unquote, has been, by definition, pushed and pulled that way by the grown-ups in their lives. Remember, this is the same logic that conservatives use when they say that uh, all gay people uh, have to be groomed into it, you know? Like, they, like, they'll be like, yeah, when I was six years old, I saw, like, my neighbor Stacy's ass, and I was like, damn, I want to climb up in there. But then when, like, they, they're, they're, they're like, what, kids can't be gay. A kid said they're gay? Their parents must have raped them when they were a child, you know? Yeah, like, it's the same basic logic, you know? Um, don't look weird at me. That's literally what they say. Do you understand now? Because I literally can't make it any simpler or plainer than that. The book is written at a reading level for kids who barely know how to read. But you failed to write that book, Matt. You failed to write that book. That's on you. It's not my fault if you're turning in a fourth grade book report and there are errors in it. Jesus. So if that's still above your intellectual pay grade, I'm, I'm afraid there's, there's not much else I can do. Very defensive. Except say that you're canceled. Along with fake Randy Savage, Sam Collins, the rest of the YouTube hordes, who have all tried and failed to take down my book, Johnny the Walrus, which is- This is good. Um, hopefully he gets my advice. Here, in fact, I'm actually going to do him a favor right now. Um, hold on. Just a moment. Uh, I think that I am going to... Yes, I'm going to create the missing page. Um, we're going to fix the problem right now. Okay, here we go. Now, I really should be getting paid for this, you know. Uh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't just do stuff like this for free. Uh, it's, it's not, um, it's not, a uh, good form to let other people take uh, benefit from your work like that. But I think in this case, I'm okay with it because it would be relatively easy to do. So let me um, copy this, put this over here. All right, going good, going good. Just a moment. So we just need to... Get this done up properly. We'll get Johnny down here in the corner. Okay. Uh, we'll need to erase the branding, obviously. But here, we have Johnny down here in the corner. All right, there we go. And uh, save that. Thank you. We 
we just remove. There we go. Any unfortunate brand associations that might taint the sincerity of our message. Now, as for this one, let me see. I think this one's a fake PNG. Yeah, it is. That's okay. We can still work with this. Um, there we go. We have the mom. And uh, is there any way we can deal with this fake PNG? I think I think I should just get another one. Hold on. Let's let's just get another PNG. Uh, proper transparent image. No, that one's supposed to be uh, functional. I'm not sure why it's not. What's her name? Lois. Lois Family Guy PNG. There we go. Uh, that's not a PNG. That's not a PNG. Why do they do this? Oh, here we go. Hopefully this works. Okay. I guess we're going to be like that. Fine. Then we'll just do this. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Okay. Now we just... She'll be sort of off frame, just like that. Okay. Here. All right, good. Now we just need to... All right, it's finally time to add the hard-hitting dialogue. Uh, mom, no, it would be up here, there we go, there we go, mom, I am not a walrus, there we go. Okay, and then down here uh, we have the other dialogue from the mom where she says, yes, you are. Matt, this one's a freebie. This one's a freebie, Matt. Okay, can you screenshot this? All right, this one's for free. Just right there. Just add that in. Can you like edit it on Amazon, or do you need like a like a, a version two, like a like a reprint? Yes, this is also an NFT. Um, this is a, this would be good good NFT, I think. Um, <laughs> it goes hard. Feel free to screenshot. True. All right. Well, we've done our good deed for the day. Um, and just one second, I hear. I hear baby behavior. I looked at her in the hallway and she let out the highest pitched squeak you could ever imagine. So cute. She loves talking. What's up? He says hi. You have eye poopies, Artemy. There you go. Oh yeah, probably Tempest. There we go. There we go. Look at him. Is Artemy male or female? Artemy is male. And a fascist. Yeah, he looks very huffy. Ah! Very huffy. Yeah? Yeah? It's because he was playing with Pigeon before I picked him up. <laughs>